Jack Pucci, uh, Foundation Ministries. They're going out to the community, raising up disciples, teachings, and strengthening the local church. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. It's good to be back again. It's a great place to be on Sunday morning. Um, there's a not be, not because you're here, because that's good, but because God's here. Amen. I mean, and that's why you're here. Amen. Because the Lord's in the house. And we just were at a conference yesterday, and we heard that the main thing for the church is that the Lord be in the house. And the Lord is in this house. Thank God for that. Amen. I'm going to ask my wife to come and greet you this morning. And I believe that she has a prayer to pray over. And I'll let her explain that. Praise God. Amen. Good to be with you again today. Praise God. I want to see a show of hands. How many of you went through any time period that you were sitting in the dark because of the recent storm? Yeah. Was it fun? <laughs> but you know, when we are just sitting in the dark, something becomes obvious that we really need light. We really need light a lot. And, you know, there's a spiritual lesson in that. And the Word of God tells us in the book of, of Philippians chapter 2, it, starting with verse 12, it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God, see, God's working, who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing. And this is the verse that I want. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. And it's not fun being in the dark. Not at all. And you need light, you know, like we have these little flashlights that we used just to get up to go to the bathroom at night. And this flashlight's got a little flaw in it. I don't know if you can see that. But three of the lights are not lit. And so, spiritually speaking, you know, this, this would be better light if it was all lit. And, and today, God needs us to be shining brighter than ever. And as it says in here, that, um, that we need to work it out in our lives. But God's working with us. And as he's working with us, we need to shine bright. Because let me tell you, what we just went through in the physical sense is what's happened in the spiritual sense. Amen. Over this whole region. And over this Amen. nation. And over this world. Amen. There's a darkness that's coming. And a light is very important in the midst of darkness. And you may say this, I'm only little. Like this little light. And this is a little, little flashlight. But let me tell you, this little flashlight, I don't know if you can see it, but if it was dark in here, this little light shines out a powerful, powerful light. And the scripture tells us here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, you may be saying, like, I, I got nothing to offer. How could I be a light shining in the darkness? But it says this, for you, you, ye all, all of you together, see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. And so you see, you may feel this big, but to God, you are a big, shining light. But I need to tell you, this little light by itself is wonderful to just get to the bathroom or whatever. But you can't really read too well by this. But if you put a bunch of these little lights together, Amen. you will have a bright, shining light. And that is what God needs in this hour. He needs all of us together shining bright. And not just this house. What he really needs is the church to stop being divided and get together. You know, in the state of New Jersey, there is a lot of destruction from this storm. And the church, praise the Lord, down in South Jersey is coming together. And God can begin a spiritual work out of this physical storm where the church can rise up, shine its light, and be used to bring many to him. But I'm going to ask you to stand because there's something else that we're facing a darkness you may be reading in the news. You may be seeing what's going on in Israel. And actually, since the election, 
something very bad has happened there where they're being bombarded daily by missiles. And the missiles are reaching into areas that have never been reached before. They're going as far as Tel Aviv. They're going into Jerusalem. And I think, I believe it was like over 500 have been shot over there. I don't know if they're, but to some of them, they're getting, knocking them down. But we need to pray together. You see, our light can shine in prayer. There is power in prayer and unity. And we're going to pray right now for Israel, for the leaders of the nation, for the military, because they're getting ready possibly to go in and, and, and take some area. And we need to pray for the spiritual darkness that's over that nation. The enemy is trying to destroy them, and, and he won't. But we're going to pray and bind our prayers together that even in the midst of this bombardment, that the people of that nation will cry out to their Savior and come to know their Messiah. Amen? I'm going to ask you to join hands. Join hands. We're going to do this as a mighty thing before God. The unity, and there's churches, as Brother Jamie has told me this morning, the churches, the Eagle's Wings ministry is asking every church that stands behind Israel to pray. And so there is power. There is power in the prayer that goes out to God from a unified church. Amen? And Father, in the name of Jesus, that mighty name, that at that name of Jesus, every knee will bow, Lord God, in the heavens, on the earth, Earth and on the, the earth, God. And today, Lord God, we declare your name over the, Lord God, nation of Israel, Lord God. We declare your might and your power over that nation in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come together, Lord God, to stand in the gap for them, Lord God. We make a hedge of prayer protection around the borders of that nation, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that your angelic host will be released right now, Lord, over that nation, Lord God. Father, we come again the spirits, Lord God, that are trying to destroy that nation, Lord. We stand, Lord God, and we speak in the authority of your word against the spiritual powers and principalities, Lord. We pull them down by the name of Jesus, God. And we pray, Father God, for the leaders of that nation, God for wisdom, Lord God, discernment, and to know what to do, Lord God. We pray, Father God, for everyone, Lord God, that's going to be called up to be in the military again for protection over their life, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, for the innocent victims, God, in the Gaza Strip, Lord God. Lord, those victims that these Hamas are standing behind, Lord God, and using them, Lord God. We pray for their protection, Lord God. We pray for the citizens, Lord God, of Israel, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for the villages, Lord God, and the cities and the towns, God. And the fear, God, we come against that spirit of fear, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that they will see a miraculous intervention of your might and your power, Lord. And as you worked in the days of the Bible, Lord God, that you would move again across the face of that nation. And that they will see Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, come to their defense, Lord God. We just thank you today, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, peace, Lord God, in that region, Lord. We do pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord God. We we pray for your peace over that area, Lord God. And we do thank you in Jesus' name for the power of prayer. And we praise you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank the Lord for his answer to prayer. Amen. God moves. When we invite him into a circumstance through our prayers, we are saying, God, come into this situation. God, we invite you. We stand in the gap for others. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You know, it reminded me of that little song, This Little Light of Mine. Yeah. I'm going to let it shine. Amen? Amen. Can you turn with me this morning to the Gospel of John, chapter number eight? And um, I, I woke up, I, went, I think I started last night getting a little bit of a stuffy head. So I don't know if my voice sounds different today. It's not put on. It's, <laughs> it's um, I think, a little. Uh, Stuffy, uh, I don't know what it is, the, um, if it's um, the heat in the house, thank you, or the, um, a little cold or something, but we're not going to let that stop us this morning, and when you hear the theme this morning, you might understand it, um, you know, uh, uh, you know there's a, uh, there, there is a, a backlash when you expose Satan, there is, but God is greater, I, I like your poster there, uh, you're a, your banner of warfare, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Uh, God is faithful and great. I want to tell you that um, I preached upstate New York one time in 2007, and I preached 
I, I basically uh, said the church, time the church to rise and, um, and bring it on because we're going we're gonna to fight the devil. You know, it was, a, it was a, an expose of the devil and how we could fight and warfare and all that. And um, a week later, I broke my leg. And the pastor called because that's what you get for getting the devil riled up. I said, well, he broke my leg, but I'm going to be healed and he's not going to win. He's still a loser. Well, the title this morning is The Devil is a Liar, Jesus is the Deliverer, and we believe and belong to Jesus. Amen. So the devil, he's a liar. Jesus is Deliverer and Savior. But you and I, we are the believers and we belong to him. Amen. And that's a kind of a long title, but... That's the title for the message today. In John chapter 8, verse 39, we see that Jesus exposes Satan. And he exposes people who are actually working for Satan, but they think they're working for God. That's pretty scary. In verse number 39, it says, They answered and said to him, this was the Jewish people, they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. This was primarily the leaders of the Jewish people in those days who opposed Christ. And Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Now they were confused because then they said, uh, they said to him, we were not born of fornication or illegitimately. We have one father, that's God. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of lies. He is a liar and the father of lies. Amen. The devil is a liar, Jesus is the deliverer, and we are believers and belong to Jesus. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? You know, when I first was saved, I heard people say, just believe in Jesus, you're saved, and that's it. And I thought, well, that's easy enough. We actually thought it was too easy. We said, oh, there's got to be something because, you know, we're all leaning towards, before we're saved, we're leaning towards, we got to work for, for, you know, or if you're religious, you have, to, you have to climb the stairs of the cathedral on your knees and kiss, and, and kiss St. Anne's feet at the statue. That's what Martin Luther thought until he learned that, no, the Bible says the just shall live by faith and that it's grace through faith that we're saved. When he learned that, he recognized that it wasn't through works. So we look at, what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Well, what it means to believe in Jesus is to have faith in him and what he's done on Calvary and what he's done on the cross. That's what it means to have faith in him. But if you believe in Jesus, you've got to believe the whole package. You don't just believe what Jesus said here in one place, but you don't take what is, this is not a menu. Do you understand that? It's not, you know, I, go to, I love Chinese food. I go to the Chinese restaurant. You have column A and column B. You could choose this. That's not how the Bible is. You know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. The whole Bible. Not just, so when I say I believe in Jesus, I'm saying I believe he died for me, but I believe everything he taught. And I believe everything he said. If, if he says something I didn't like, I just can't throw it away. I've got to say, well, you know what? My opinion has to die and I have to submit to the word of the Lord. That's what it means to believe in Jesus. And we're believers in Jesus here today. But the devil is a liar. Why am I saying this? A lot of times people say this as a cliche. The devil is a liar. And, but it's a true statement. And why I bring it today is what I want you to understand today is that the devil lies to you and me every day. You think those things that you hear in your ear, that you thought of it yourself. You say, oh, oh I thought that myself. And then you feel guilty about it. But you didn't think that. The devil stuck that in your head. And then if you keep entertaining it, then there's a problem. But you need to see, you've got to, you and I, we, me too, we have to, see this, all my messages come from here. I mean, they hit me first. It's, it's like, you know, I preach to other people after it's been preached to me. And I'm telling you, I'm t I was talking to myself this week. I said, Lord, I need a, a fresh word for this congregation. And, you know, I always preach what God shows me. So what God shows me.